What's up guys, good to see you this week. Last week I put up a YouTube post and a tweet just going over it. I'm gonna be making a YouTube Q&A right now, this week. And I wanted you to ask me whatever questions about computer science, software engineering, or anything, really, I don't really care. And I was gonna pick a handful of them to answer in this video. Well, I picked just about 30 questions to answer in this video. If I didn't get to your question, I apologize. But there are just so many. So I I'm trying to do as many as possible. I'm going to go into depth probably on a few, but try to really go by and give you decent answers on most of them. So we're going to start off on the questions asked on Twitter. Joe asked me, how can I make sure I'm job ready by the time I finish my computer science degree in two years? Not the getting the job part, but being comfortable in the work environment and not coming across as a loss in an entry level position. Thank you. So I would say there's two ways to go about this. If you have two years left, then that's a lot of internship time. You can do internships during whatever semester may be. Obviously, summer is the most typical, but I had internships in the fall and in the spring. And that, the cool thing about that is that when you're an intern, they don't expect you to carry the same weight as an entry-level developer. They understand you're an intern. You, there may even be times where there's not a lot of work for you to do, which is the worst as an intern because you kind of want to be the most efficient worker as possible, but if there's not that much work to do, then you can't really get it done. But obviously that's gonna help you in the overall work environment because you'll see, you have a firsthand look of how these places develop, uh, uh, work and develop whatever application they're working on. And I guess this also depends on what type of job you're looking for, but also it, it'll get your foot in the door for an entry level position because most companies take on internships because they wanna fill an entry level position. And then of course the second way is just continue to double down on your coursework, build any side projects that'll help complement your coursework or whatever you plan to do after college. I understand you wanna keep your mind open. Oh, well maybe I wanna be this type of developer or that type of developer, systems analyst, it doesn't really matter. I would say try to focus in on one. That way you can have a more solidified trajectory on how you plan, like, like make, your career purposeful. Don't just take any job that comes your way. I mean, maybe you'll end up doing that, but try to make it purposeful with the side projects that you work on now. That way you have a better chance than getting the job that you actually want. Question number two from Elias. Have you ever spent time on cybersecurity and hacking? I have. I actually was seriously considering getting into pen testing. And I mean, I guess I did uh, in a, a little bit, not career-wise. That was the actual plan, but I dabbled with it. I did a little bit of like hack the box tutorials. If you don't know what hack the box is and you're interested in that type of stuff, like hacking and pen testing, I definitely recommend uh, looking into that. But other than that, I, that, that, that's kind of where it laid. I mean, I can understand some of the networking and things that go into hacking, but I didn't really see the job market for it for where I want to live, which is where I currently live. So I just, kind of focus my efforts in a different way. Maybe sometime in the future, I'll, I'll kind of scratch that itch and get more into hacking and cybersecurity, but for right now and, and for the past, eh, not too much. Matthias, did you go through tutorial purgatory? If yes, how do you escape? Yeah, I mean, of, of course I did. I was even in school, I was doing tutorials on the side when I was trying to learn iOS development, and then basically everything that I could do was follow a tutorial which I felt like a genius at the time, but I couldn't do anything more. And I think the best way to try to escape that, 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 that'll that really help you gain development skills, your own skills, rather than just following a tutorial, are following a tutorial, but and then implementing a feature within that tutorial. So once you follow the tutorial, you'll have at least a decent understanding of the code base. You'll know kind of why this code is here and why that code is there and a bit of what it does. So add a small feature to that app, whatever you may have built to that website, and go from there. When you add the feature, that's when you actually have to go in and try to solve it. That's when you have to go on Stack Overflow and try to figure out kind of how to solve that problem. I, that's my best advice. And just keep practicing, practicing, practicing on actually doing development. Maybe just work on really small projects as well. And, and the more you practice, the better you'll get, and you'll be able to get out of that tutorial purgatory. Mikey says, hey, I would like to hear more about machine learning. I'm only aware of it from the videos you've done on it, but I'd like to know what are some everyday uses of it. Thank you and have a good one. So when you say everyday uses of it, there's two ways I can interpret it. One is like where you see it kind of in your day-to-day -day life. Another one is since we're in computer science, software engineering, how everyday use is like as a job. Well, as a job, 
data science. I mean, there are other realms as well, but data science I, I feel like is most prevalent, especially in the job market. But as as far as like everyday uses, I mean, I guess Siri or, or for voice assistants as a whole can be considered machine learning. But I mean, there's also dynamic pricing and process automation, and that's kind of everyday uses for machine learning. Obviously, there are things that I do, like I try to make it make an algorithm beat whatever video game I like, but that's just kind of doing it for fun and not real practical for a job, right? Well, maybe there are some jobs like that. I don't know. And as, um, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, how can I earn money while I'm in college? Well, assuming you watch my channel, so I'm assuming you're a computer science major, there are different ways to utilize your software development skills to make money. I mean, there are a few ways I just talked about in all honesty. You can bring on website clients, familiarize yourself with WordPress, Familiarize yourself with Shopify or Webflow if you want to uh, develop custom websites, if you will, instead of really getting into the weeds. Or if you really want to get into the weeds, actually go forward with HTML, CSS, and whatever framework you like to use and build websites for clients. That's a good way to earn money while you're in college. And there's also, I've, I've laid out a video, Ways to Make Money as a Software Developer. I think that's what I titled it, where I go over all different ways to make money as a software developer including like make it a YouTube channel and things of that nature, which there are some ways that you can make more money faster. Maybe some have a, a, a better longevity or, or a better time investment. It just all depends. Watch that video if you're really interested in ways to make money. Ali asked, what is the best coding project to do while you're in college during these days? Is it game, website, simple data analytics program? What project do you really recommend me to finish in my four year period of computer science degree? I say, <laughs> and I hate when I ask questions, I don't get a straightforward answer. However, I can't give a straightforward answer because I don't know what your exact interest is. The best answer I can give you is what do you want to do? Do you want to be a web developer? Do you want to be front end designer? Do you want to be a full stack developer? Do you want to do back end stuff? Do you want to be an app developer? Do you want to make games? Do you want to get into data analytics and be a systems analyst, data analyst, maybe a data scientist? Just like I said earlier in this video, focus in make it purposeful, make the projects you're working on purposeful. Maybe it can be in the same language in which your college is teaching you. Like my college was Java and C++, so it would be smarter of me to focus on Java and C++ side projects, but you also wanna make sure that those side projects are projects that can build up your portfolio to potentially get a job in whatever those side projects are. If it's, full, if it's Java web development, that's the career path you choose, then work on that, right? So just make it purposeful. Emmanuel, I started program about three years ago and went back to college to get my degree in computer engineering. I mostly focus on Python and front-end web development. Any advice for a 26 year old soon to be graduate? Assuming you want to join the workforce, obviously start looking around. If you're in your like last semester or approaching your last semester of college before you're about to enter the workforce upon graduation, you can start applying to places. Apply to places, say like you're about to graduate make sure you have a good resume and everything like that. And I think that's pretty good advice because I mean, you need to have a job, but just keep doing what you enjoy. I've, it, it seems that you enjoy computer engineering, Python, front end development, double down on that and continue with it. The whole goal is to, to have fun with the entire process and make money while doing it. Obviously it's not going to always be that easy, but just do whatever you can to, to make it most fun and most, most profitable as possible. Greg, favorite music media to listen to while coding. I go through so many different waves of music, but when it comes to coding, I can't listen to anything with lyrics. I can't really get any coding done when I'm paying attention to the lyrics. So I sometimes I'll listen to just like classical piano. I haven't hit that wave recently, but I remember last year, no, when I was making, earlier this year, when I was making all those AI stuff, that's what I listened to. Uh, for the most part, I don't know why, it was just nice. Other than that, I like strings. So anything that has like guitar or even banjo or those types of things, I like string bands. I just can't listen to anything with lyrics while coding. And a final question from Twitter. Fellow YouTuber Kenji asks, how do you grow a beard? I've been trying for 10 years without any success. Well, first off, I'd like to apologize if you've been trying to actively grow a beard, because I don't know what that looks like. Are you like sitting here just trying to grow it out? like you're on the toilet <laughs> or you, maybe you add some beard oil and hope that that will help. In all honesty, I just appreciate the compliment. You and I both know it's just genetics. It's kind of a luck of the draw thing. All right, moving on to YouTube, the most 
liked question, Luciano asks, while I think everyone getting to software development, engineering, or data science learning at least one of the fundamental languages is essential, I can't help but to wonder what the future programming is. My question is, what are your thoughts of programming will look like in the next 20 to 30 years? That's heavy. I still think we're going to be needed. The funny thing is, is a lot of people are like, what are you going to do when you can write programs like, like when just anybody can write a program using basic English or something along those lines? Well, it's kind of what we're doing now. Look how much it is translated from actual machine code to what we actually write. It is the human version of machine code. I don't think Python, C++, or Java are going anywhere and anywhere anytime soon. And mind you, there's a brand new language built by the biggest, one of the biggest companies on earth that is Apple and that is Swift. If their language is very similar to a lot of these other languages we've been using for the past 10, 20, 30 years, how are you really gonna say that in 20 or 30 years from now is gonna be so simple as you just type build social media app and then boom, a social media app is built. And I'm not saying you as in Luciano, I'm saying the people who think that our jobs are gonna be obsolete. 20, 30 years, I don't think our jobs are gonna be obsolete. And that's kind of how I interpreted this question. Sure, there are gonna be different applications to allow you to build things without code, kind of like we've seen pop up within the past decade or so. But even still, if you're running a business, whether it's about t-shirts or you sell coffee or you have an HVAC business, you're still gonna be inclined to hire a developer because by the time, if you were to do it yourself, you take hours out of your day where you could be actually working on your business to build a website. You could easily just paid it off, paid a developer to build your website with one of these automation tools. Cause you still have to go in and learn how each one of these things work. Like Squarespace or Wix, they're fairly straightforward, I understand that, but it's still easier to just hire somebody else to do it for you and you could probably make more money working on your actual business. Unless you're asking if artificial intelligence is gonna take our jobs, in that case, I have no idea. Probably not, still. Eakin, e uh, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. My question is, how do I build a project from scratch? Second question, how do I not freeze up when writing code for a project? Most times I understand, but can't write the code for the project. Well, how do you build a project from scratch? Uh, you just do it. <laughs> I mean, you should watch my video where I go over the full software development life cycle. I think that's what I called it. It's like a full guide tutorial. That's also part of the title that I gave it. And I take you everywhere from idea conception. We got our IDE set up. We write the code, we write tests for that code. We use version control, which is GitHub. And then we integrate uh, CICD, continuous integration and uh, deployment. And the reason I bring that up is because I, well, obviously it takes you through all of that, but I do recall sitting there before any code is written and I discuss a little bit of most people don't know what to do right here. What is the first thing you go about writing? And I really answer that question in depth with the whole practical video that's like 45 minutes long. And as for your second question, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe go in with comments and just try to comment basically pseudocode and then figure out how to put it into code because you say you understand it, but it sounds like you don't understand the code or rather how to implement it using code. And you just gotta take baby steps. And I mean, it will get easier with time. It's just right now you don't know everything just yet. Deep Inc, what is your best advice for teaching yourself AI algorithms and other more high level programming without school? So I did do my intro to artificial intelligence in school, but then I didn't do anything for, I don't know, a couple years. And then I got back into it this year. And when I got back into it this year, I just did what I thought was fun. I built a game that I knew I wanted. It was a simple game where there was minimal controls for the AI to actually use because if you're doing something like Fortnite where you build this and shoot that, like it's a lot more difficult than Tetris. So I picked a simple game like Tetris, built out Tetris. I did research into the best, I, I mean, I go over it in my AI Learns Tetris video, but I find out the best things to know when you're playing Tetris, like what the pros use in order to get the best possible score. And I basically those are the heuristics I build the AI around. Now I had a few more questions in the queue, but I think this video has gone on long enough. I hope there's some solid information in there that y'all have taken away. I like doing these from time to time because I can't make an entire video about every little topic. 
So some things that can be answered in 10 seconds or two minutes, I'd like to make, uh, I'd like to answer in these types of videos. So maybe I'll make another one next month or a month after that if your question wasn't asked in this one. If you got something out of this video, I'd appreciate if you liked it. That'll help with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this. If not, hey, that's cool too. I also wanna ask, y'all like this? You think this is kinda cool or not? Let me know. This may or may not be coming soon. I'm kinda stoked on it to be honest with you, so be nice in the comments.